Behind the locked doors of this garage, a beloved grandfather has vanished. At six foot three, 250 pounds, Mike Chambers, a former fireman and paramedic, is a mountain of a man. But the tough guy is a teddy bear to his beloved grandkids who lovingly call him Papa. The grandkids are so crazy about their Papa. The energetic retiree has another passion too, building road racers from the ground up. And besides, once your father retired, he had some passion projects that ended up consuming his life. Oh, he definitely had some passion projects. As long as I can remember, Dad has been tinkering around with cars. Mike is a regular fixture on the local car show circuit and a father figure to all the rough around the edges gearheads like his friend, Matt Snyder. Man, he would sit and talk for hours with anybody about a car. Most afternoons, you could find Mike tinkering in his workshop at his home in Quinlan, Texas, restoring his latest high-octane project. But then, one afternoon last year, the man the kids call Papa suddenly isn't there. It's not like Mike to wander off. As night falls, his wife Becca calls everyone they know looking for him. How did you first get the call? Who called you? I got a call from Becca. She was calling already at 528. Mike's daughter Susie isn't worried at first. All the way out there, I thought, I'm going to get there, and it's not going to be anything, just a misunderstanding, probably helping somebody, typical dad. It'll all be OK. That changes when Susie gets to Papa's workshop. When I arrived, I hit my knees and just sobbed because it was too horrific. Mike's wallet and keys are there in the shop next to the expensive muscle car Mike is restoring. Nothing looked to be missing, nothing looked to be out of place. He had expensive classic cars in there, he had tools, parts, none of that was gone. But strangely, two things are missing. His um, driver's license and his cell phone. Nothing um, was ever discovered missing from the shop. But Becca points out something more alarming there on the workshop floor. She says, there's something on the floor. Do you think it could be transmission fluid? It's not. It's a pool of blood that trails in quarter-sized droplets to the garage door. The placement of it to me is odd. It's like you would have just had to have spontaneously just started bleeding in the middle of the room. Then to the side of the shop, something else, something chilling. We saw a dowel rod on the ground, about this big around, about this long, and there was a palm print of blood on the dowel rod. When I saw the dowel rod, I immediately thought he was endangered. Becca calls the sheriff's department, and it's all hands on deck to find the missing grandpa. Oh, it was a chaotic scene. It was so chaotic. The crime scene tape was up. The helicopters were overhead, and I could hear the bloodhounds waiting to get out to search. Canine units searched the fields and forests surrounding the workshop. The dogs got a hit close to Mike's shop, but it mysteriously disappeared in a culvert across the street. With nothing to go on, investigators reconstruct a timeline of Mike's day. Here at the local Walmart, they find security footage of Mike buying mascara for Becca. We have him on video at the register paying for the item by himself. We have him on video walking out of the store, the camera they have right there by the exit door and getting into his vehicle and leaving the parking lot. And that's the last we have of him. Detectives track the pings from Mike's phone to nearby cell towers. It shows him traveling from the Walmart back to his workshop on Farm to Market Road. When he left Walmart and went home, we tracked him at between 50 and 60 miles per hour. Then something odd. A short time later, the cell signal picks up again, this time traveling much more slowly from his workshop back the way he came. When we left his house, after he was home for a period of time, the speed that the phone traveled was 4.5 miles an hour. A leisurely pace that continues until the cell pings suddenly and mysteriously stop. Here on a bridge over Lake Toakani, over 17 miles away. And the cell phone ping there. We were able to track the ping from his residence, essentially to the middle of the two mile bridge. After a frustrating full year of not finding Mike and no activity on his credit cards, Sheriff Randy Meeks floats a shocker of a theory, suicide. 
telling independent reporter Chris Miles that's what the evidence shows. Do you believe 100% that uh, foul play was not involved? I do. No foul play. We believe he left the residence on his own. The sheriff's department states Mike hopped on a bike at his workshop, pedaled here through town to the two mile bridge and jumped to his death. And that's why it was ruled Based a suicide? On One thing that had been verified, we're missing a bicycle out of there. 4.5 miles an hour is too fast for a walk and too slow for a car. And with the bicycle being missing, it was theorized he may have gotten on his bicycle and left the residence. But Mike's family and friends aren't buying it for a minute. No way. He just it was not the type of person that would do something like that. He didn't appear depressed or anything at all. What's more, they say, it's impossible Papa just pedals away for a good reason. The big burly heroes won Achilles' heel. It, it just, it just doesn't add up. You don't go to Walmart and buy mascara and then kill yourself. Think about it, you don't do that. Retired firefighter Mike Chambers, known by his beloved grandchildren as Papa, is missing from his workshop garage. The last sign of him is a mysterious digital breadcrumb, a cell phone signal that begins in his garage workshop and ends in the middle of this bridge. When you were searching the bridge, what did you find? Nothing of evidentiary value. Search and rescue teams explore the murky depths beneath it, looking for Mike, his bicycle, his cell phone, any sign of Papa. We have had three separate dives in that area. They were not able to locate a body or any evidence pertinent to the case. The Hunt County Sheriff's Office tells the family, based on evidence so far, it's possible Papa committed suicide. How else are you going to travel 4.5 miles an hour from a residence? to the middle of the two mile bridge. And that was the only thing of evidentiary value that we could say, okay, he somehow or another he got on the bicycle and was able to go 4.5 miles an hour and that to where the signal ended. With headlines like these, many think the case may be over. What was the reaction of all of you when you heard possibly it was suicide and coming from the sheriffs? Anger. Unless you have hardcore evidence, don't just throw that assumption out there and, and rile people up. We knew that they were grasping at straws. The biggest hit to the theory that Mike Chambers pedaled 17 miles to his death? According to his family, 70-year-old Papa had debilitating bad knees. So is your father physically capable of riding a bicycle 17 miles? No, his knees were horrible. He is physically fit, especially his upper body strength. I just don't think with two bad knees, he would have been able to handle an almost 18 mile bike ride from his house. Even Mike's car club friends say he could barely stand for more than half an hour. There is no way Michael Chambers rode a bike with his bad knees. Hunt County Sheriff Sergeant Jeff Haynes says they're just following where the evidence leads. You know, it was a likely theory or not, we go with what the evidence shows us and develop theories from there and try to investigate those theories to the fullest. It's not only Papa's bad knees, the route would have taken him straight through town. Lots of people, I think, would have seen him. And onto a bridge that was busy with construction workers. And yet, nobody saw him? You know, it just don't make sense to me. Chris Miles is a local independent journalist. He takes me out across from Two Mile Bridge, where Mike's cell signal ended and Papa theoretically committed suicide, and shows me how unlikely he thinks it is that Mike Chambers' life ended here, on a bridge just a few feet over the water. We're here at Lake Tawakani, and the first thing that jumps out to me is that jump that Michael Chambers supposedly did would not kill you. It's just a few feet. Definitely. I don't, I don't see how that would kill someone. The fall wasn't gonna be far enough to kill anyone. Not only that, this bridge that connects two counties is the busiest in the area. You come down, there's all the major businesses here in the city are along this one road where they said he jumped off of the bridge. Wasn't this a weekday during the day? That's correct. And it was under construction, That's so correct. construction workers would have been, there's construction workers That's right now. That's correct. And uh, there was barges here, uh, boats, men working along the, uh, the guardrail of the bridge. Um, I mean, there was just, there at 3.30 in the, in the day, 
uh, even up to a five or six, there was guys out here working. Uh, you know, somebody's seen something. And most chilling of all, no one has yet to explain the brutal evidence in Papa's workshop. They say there's no proof of a crime at this point. Well, you've got blood. Yes, you do. You have a good amount of blood. In the shop area of his residence was a very small amount of blood that was on the floor. No, there weren't a few drops of blood. It was a significant amount of blood. Not a fatal amount of blood, but very significant. What do you think happened that day? I think somebody laid in the woods and attacked him and, and hauled him off. I do think it's possible that, you know, if someone took him or did something to him, that they disposed of his phone there at the lake. If that's true, why? We just couldn't figure out what had happened and why anybody would want to hurt him, because at that point, that's I think that's pretty much what most of us were thinking, is that someone had harmed him. Family and friends consider every possibility, even going down some dark roads. They say they can't help but notice something about Papa's wife, Becca, seems a little off. She, in a stern voice, looked at me and said, Penny, he's not coming back. Then the family thinks maybe they know why. March 10th of 2017, the last day anyone has seen Michael Papa Chambers alive. He was at Walmart approximately 11 o'clock that day. We just don't know what happened to him after that. Michael's family and friends claim there's obvious foul play involved and turn to private investigator Jane Holmes for help. Michael Chambers didn't drive a bicycle six hours on a heavy traveled road and go to a bridge and jump off. Jane does not buy the sheriff's findings and after investigating now has her own theory. Have you been to that bridge? I have. Can someone die by jumping off that bridge? Could they die? Yeah. Would they? Probably not. It's nine, 10 feet off the water. It's not going to kill someone. It's not a, quote, suicide bridge. Our theory is that someone took that phone to the bridge and tossed it just out the window. So who would so callously toss away the beloved former fireman? Both Jane and the family can't shake the feeling that somebody close to Papa knows more than she's telling. You're referring to his wife. To Becca, correct. Becca Chambers is Papa's wife of 30 years. His family claims Becca's the love of Mike's life, and he treated her like royalty. I was like, wow, how did she get so lucky? Not a lot of women get that. But Susie says maybe Grandma Becca didn't feel lucky enough. She claims Becca had been sneaking around behind Papa's back. You were able to find out and get confirmation that Becca was having affairs and not just one. How did you feel about that? Oh, I, I was furious. He treated her like a princess. Dad brought her coffee every morning. He would fix her lunch. He cooked the dinners. He would do anything for her. And it broke my heart that somehow that wasn't enough. And friends claim a year after Mike's unresolved disappearance, Becca has allegedly moved on. Just a few short months after Mike vanished, Becca petitioned to have him declared dead. That meant she was the sole beneficiary of his estate valued at almost $300,000. She would also receive his pension. Becca has not helped in any searches. She has not talked to media how she has basically shunned Susie and not reached out to her. She's gotten rid of Susie's father's stuff. Becca's gotten rid of the whole house, and that's sad. The family says it's not just sad, it's suspicious. They're asking, could there be a link between Becca's bows and Michael's disappearance? So the theory that there was some fingers being pointed towards the wife. Yes, ma'am, we're aware of those. Hunt County Sheriff Sergeant Jeff Haynes won't give up too many details of their ongoing investigation, but he does say investigators have talked to Becca Chambers and her boyfriends. So she's completely cleared? Yes. The other parties involved in the extramarital affairs were interviewed and their statements were corroborated and dismissed as suspects at this time. So all three men were cleared? Yes. Crime Watch Daily wanted to get Becca's side of the story. Our producers called several times. I even went to her home. We'd really like to hear from her. But Becca hasn't responded. 
Sergeant Haynes admits the suicide angle isn't the only theory they're considering. Do you have other directions? Yes, there are other directions. It's foul play. I'm not going to comment on that for the integrity of the case. And though Michael Chambers is officially classified as a missing person, the Sheriff's Department is treating his disappearance as something much more dire. Are you handling this case like a homicide? Yes, all the extra work that we've done on this case, we've handled it as if we were investigating a homicide. He's confident somebody who knows something about the disappearance of Michael Chambers is about to come forward. One thing about a case as it goes on, loyalties between people kind of diminish, and you hope that when those loyalties diminish, whatever they may be, that they'll contact law enforcement and give us some information. Until that information comes out, Susie remains haunted by these last known images of her dad and vows she will never stop looking for the papa she loves. Family members say to me, your dad would want you to move on. But if the roles were reversed, what he would do is what I'm doing. He sounds like a fighter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you have any information on Michael Chambers' disappearance or saw him on March 10th of last year, you can call the Hunt County Sheriff's Department. That number is 1-903-453-6800.